Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about securing trunk ports. And if you recall, in the ICND1 material, we talked about how to secure your standard user port. And one of the things we talked about was if you're not going to use a port, you simply shut it down, administratively disable it. That way, if somebody tries to use it and they're not authorized to, they're not going to get very far. Well, now that we've talked about trunking and dynamic trunking protocol, we're going to, con to continue that conversation. So with DTP, we now know that switches can negotiate uh, to become a trunk. And that seems pretty convenient and helpful to us. However, it actually introduces a bunch of different problems. Here we have two switches and there's a trunk between them. The best practice in the industry actually states to disable negotiation between uh, switches that are going to trunk and to manually configure your trunk ports. Well, this is a recommendation uh, that is really targeted towards a predictable, more stable network. And the reason being is if you manually configure these ports to trunk and to only trunk and they will not negotiate, then you know how they're going to behave every single time. There's no chance of them becoming an access port by accident. So there's more predictable behavior on your network and that's what we want. We, we want a very predictable network. So that's an operational benefit. Let's take a look when we have a standard user connecting to a switch port. And this is a bit more where the security aspect comes in. However, it's still dealing with DTP. Remember the default configuration mode for a switch port? It's the switch port mode dynamic auto. And that means that the, the port is willing to become a trunk if the other side negotiates and initiates that negotiation first. Well, let's say this user is not your average user. It's somebody with uh, a malicious uh, intention, wants to get on the network and cause trouble. Well, this user can go ahead and negotiate a trunk port with our switch, even though they're not supposed to. The problem that creates is now this is a trunk port, and that user can receive all traffic on every VLAN that's configured on that switch that's allowed on that particular trunk port. It's a big security risk. They may, not be, they may not be authorized to view those VLANs, and some of those VLANs could have really sensitive, restricted data. Okay, so that's a very big problem. The best practices in the recommendations state this. Either you should manually set a port to be an access port, and by that, you know, we use the switch port mode access command. And in addition to that, if you want, you can assign ports that are not supposed to be used to a bogus VLAN, a VLAN that doesn't go anywhere it, and it's not used in production. It's just if somebody happens to get on that port, they will just end up in this VLAN and it's, it's not going to cause any problems. So that's the first thing, and manually set the access, the switch port to be an access port. You can also take it a step further and uh, take a different approach and just use the switch port no negotiate command uh, in the interface configuration settings. That way, there's no chance that the user can negotiate with the switch to become a trunk. Okay, so just a few things to keep in mind. Security isn't uh, uh, the most uh, fun and exciting of topics, but if we pay attention to it, it saves us a lot of potential trouble down the line uh, when we prevent some hackers from disrupting our network. Okay, so that's it. That is uh, a few points on how to secure your trunk ports. Thanks for watching.